Namaste. Welcome back to the session of basic thermodynamics. In the previous session, uh, we have gone through second law of thermodynamics and uh, entropy. Uh, with that, we have uh, ended up with uh, few laws of the thermodynamics such as uh, zeroth law, first law, second law as well as the entropy. Based on the entropy, we have defined uh, third law of thermodynamics also. So, those were the laws of thermodynamics. In this session, we will be entering into the totally new concept which is termed as the pure substances. Here, uh, we need to understand the term pure substance very clearly in the initial stage itself because we will be talking throughout the session with respect to the pure substance only. I have uh, written the definition of pure substance over here. The pure substance is a substance which is homogeneous throughout its chemical composition. This is what is the definition of a pure substance. What is this definition? It is a substance which is homogeneous throughout its chemical composition. Say for example, if I take this as a substance, this is a chalk piece, this as a substance. If I have to call this chalk piece as a pure substance, then this chalk piece's chemical composition should be same throughout its mass. Then only I can call it as a pure substance or else you can take any material. Say for example, I will take the scale. If I have to call this scale as a pure substance, then we need to make sure that the chemical composition of this material should be same throughout its mass then I will call the substance as a pure substance. So, it is very clear chemical composition, the chemicals which are present in the substance should be same. I mean composition should be same throughout the mass of the substance. Then we will call it as a pure substance in thermodynamics. If we go through the examples, we can quote many examples for this. I will write few examples over here. If I write the example, I will write diamond. Diamond is a example for a pure substance. Next, if I take any other thing, I will call water as the pure substance. If I go through any other thing, I will call nitrogen gas as the pure substance. Or else I can call oxygen gas as the pure substance. In these examples, what we need to look into is, in all those examples, the chemical composition of the substance, I mean the example what I have written are same. Diamond is of same chemical composition throughout its mass. Water will be of same chemical composition throughout its mass. Nitrogen gas as well as oxygen gas will be same, will be having same composition throughout their masses. So, these are the few examples for pure substances. Here what I have done or in what fashion I have taken the examples is diamond which is nothing but a solid substance, water which is nothing but a liquid substance and gases which are nothing but gaseous substances. That means what? There is no restriction to define a pure substance with respect to the phase of a substance. In the sense, the pure substance can exist in any phases, in any state, that such as solid, liquid and gases. In all these three states, the pure substance can exist. We are not restricted in the state of a substance, I mean phase of the substance. So, in all the three phases, a pure substance can exist. Next thing is, here it is very clear, in any state the pure substance can exist. If it is a mixture of two phases, is it possible to have a pure substance? Next thing is what? Mixture of phases. That means what? If a mixture of solid and liquid, liquid and gas or gas and solid can be considered as a pure substance or not. Now I will write an example. I will have the mixture of uh, water and steam. Here it is very clear, 
water which is nothing but the liquid form steam which is nothing but the vapor form of water so now i have two different phases this is a vapor phase and this is liquid phase the substance is same which is nothing but the water now when the water is in liquid form and when the water is in steam form i mean vapor form will the composition change or not that is the question if composition of the water remains same even in liquid and even in vapor form then i can call this as a pure substance it is very clear the composition is not going to change h2o so composition is not going to change because of that i can call mixture of water and steam as a pure substance you can have ice and water now what are the phases this is solid phase of the water and this is liquid phase so now we have a mixture of phases of substance but the ice is a solid form of water water it is nothing but the liquid so now the chemical composition is not going to change that means what i can call this mixture i mean this two substances mixture also as a pure substance because chemical composition is not going to change we have not restricted the phase of the substance to say it as a pure substance in whatever state the substance may exist only condition is its chemical composition should be same even if it is existing in different phases i mean if a given substance is a mixture of di different phases then also we can consider it as a pure substance next thing is if it is a mixture of chemical components or chemical elements if the given substance is a mixture of various chemical elements whether it is possible to call it as a pure substance or not say for example i will take an example of sulfuric acid h2so4 the name of the given substance is h2so4 sulfuric acid h2 s 1 o 4 now throughout the mass of this substance the composition of the elements which are present in the given substance is same then i can call it as a pure substance even the given substance is a mixture of various chemical elements i can consider that also as pure substance you can take any chemicals hcl hydrochloric acid or as you can take nitrogen oxide throughout the mass the chemical composition should be same that means we are not restricting the pure substance based on the phase or based on the mixture of phases or based on amount of chemical elements which are present in the substance no restriction is based on the number of elements which are present in the substance so this is what is regarding the pure substance then the question arises then what kind of elements will be not considered as a pure substance now i'll take an example a mixture of oil and water now the question is a mixture of oil and water whether it is a pure substance or not now we need to think here the condition is throughout the mass the chemical composition is same now i'll uh, write this mixture in a schematic way i will take a container in which i will pour the water we know the water density is more when compared to that of oil density because of that the oil starts to float on the water so now this is oil and this is water present in a container now the question is this mixture oil and water mixture can be considered as a pure substance or not the answer is no because the very first condition or only one condition what we have to say it as a pure substance is throughout its mass the chemical composition is same say for example i will fragment this i'll take this fragment 
I'll take this fragment. I'll take one more fragment over here. If I take a substance from this fragment, I will be getting only oil from the oil and water mixture. If I take this fragment, I will be getting only water from the mixture. If I take these two, I will be getting oil and water from the mixture. That means throughout the mass, the constituent is getting varied. If this is happening, then the substance, the given substance will not be considered as a pure substance. I hope it is very clear now. If you want to call a given substance as a pure substance, make sure the chemical composition is same throughout the mass of the substance. By keeping this in mind, in this unit, we will be talking with respect to different phases of a um, substance, which is nothing but the water. We have already defined or quoted an example of water for the pure substance. Water is existing in the liquid form and even we came to know that the mixture of various phases of water is also considered as pure substance. So throughout the pure substance unit, we will be concentrating on phase change and phase, I mean various phases of water. By keeping this in mind, we will be moving with next concept. Okay, let us go through the various phase diagrams. Uh, we have discussed that we will be considering water as a pure substance and we will be looking on to phase change of water through the diagrams. So that diagrams are termed as a phase diagrams. So here I will be looking for phase diagrams of water. Here uh, phase change diagram of water can be represented on various planes. Those planes may be the properties of that of water such as pressure, small p, volume, capital V, temperature, capital T. So by keeping these three as the major properties, pressure, volume and temperature, I will be looking for phase change phenomenon of water. We know water in its solid, in its liquid, in its vapor as well as a mixture of water in its various phases can also be considered as a pure substance. So now we will be looking on to the phase change of water. Very first phase change diagram or phase diagram is PV diagram where P stands for pressure, V stands for volume. That means the pre I mean the phase change of the water will be seen on pressure and volume plane. So pressure is on the y axis, volume is on the x axis. Now we need to look on to the diagram which explains us the phase change of a substance. Initially what we need to understand is the lines which are drawn parallel to the volume, I mean the y axis, I mean sorry the x axis. The lines which are drawn parallel to the x-axis are constant pressure lines. That means these lines are parallel to the x-axis or these lines are perpendicular to the y-axis. In the y-axis I have pressure, in the x-axis I have volume. That means the parallel to the x-axis is a constant pressure line. I have written three constant pressure lines and I will name them as a P, P dash and P double dash. P is one such pressure, P dash is another such pressure and P double dash is another pressure. Now, we have already written uh, the diagram. Now, let us try to understand what happens at a particular pressure line. I will take the very first line as an example. I will explain the process with respect to this pressure so that the same thing can be applied to the other two pressure lines. Now let this pressure small p be 1 bar, almost atmospheric pressure. At this pressure, how the phase change of water occurs? That is what we are trying to understand now. That pressure line, what I have written, I will segregate it and then I will write it up. Now this is the p 
which is equal to 1 mark. Now I have uh, written the starting point as 1, I will take that point as 1. In this point, I mean at the point 1, the substance water in its pure solid state, in the sense the water is in the form of ice. At point 1, it is ice. We knew the temperature of the ice is less than 0 degree centigrade. So, I will keep this as say for example, minus 15 degree centigrade the ice is existing at minus 15 degree centigrade. Then only we can say it as a ice, I mean solid form of water. Next, if I come to the point 2, point 2 is what you are moving along the volume line in the sense you are giving up the heat to the water. I mean whatever the substance which is existing, you are adding up the heat. Now, you, we have added heat to this ice which is at 15 degree centigrade. Once heat is added, it will reach certain state. I have considered that state as a point 2 and I will take the temperature as 0 degree centigrade. At 0 degree centigrade, why it has become 0 degree centigrade? Because I have added the heat to minus 15 degree centigrade ice, it has gained up the heat and its temperature rises to 0 degree centigrade, even at 0 degree centigrade, the substance exists as ice. We can have the ice at 0 degree centigrade. So, that is what is this. Still, I will keep on adding the heat. Next, I will reach the state 3. I will take this as the state 3. At state 3, this will become water at 0 degree centigrade. You have added the heat to minus 15 degree centigrade ice, it has become 0 degree centigrade ice. Now you have added heat to 0 degree centigrade ice, then it becomes 0 degree centigrade water. Still keep on adding the heat. Here it is water, now still I will be adding the heat to the substance. Now I will reach the condition 4. Now it will take one more form, it will still exist in the form of water but the water temperature will be 100 degree centigrade. Upon adding the heat, its temperature is rise to 100 degree centigrade. Go on adding the heat. Still, it reaches the point number 5. At point 5, the water has turned into water vapor and the temperature remains same, which is nothing but 100 degree centigrade. Still, keep on adding the heat, the water reaches the state 6, wherein it will be in the form of vapor only, but the condition is superheated condition and the temperature is greater than 100 degree centigrade. So, try to understand one particular line. Initially at point 1, the substance exists as the ice at lesser temperature. Upon adding heat, it has, it is in the same form ice at 0 degree centigrade. Still. We, are, we have added the heat, it exists in the form of water at 0 degree centigrade. Upon adding the heat, it is existing in the form of water at 100 degree centigrade. Upon adding the heat, it has become water vapor at 100 degree centigrade. Still, if you keep on adding the heat, it will be converted into superheated vapor and its temperature will be more than 100 degree centigrade. Here it is less than 0 degree centigrade. So now, extreme conditions are very clear. At the starting point I have taken the temperature which is less than 0 degree centigrade. At the end point I have taken the temperature which is greater than 100 degree centigrade at 1 bar pressure. So now what are these points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? These are the extreme points. Here I do not have a limit on the temperature, it is less than 0 degree centigrade. Here also I do not have any limit on the temperature which is greater than 100 degree centigrade. But at in between points 2, 3, 4, 5, the points 2, 3, 4, 5, we have a temperature restrictions. At point 2, it has to be 0 degree centigrade. At point 3, it has to be at 0 degree centigrade. At point 4, it has to be at 100 degree centigrade. At point 5 also, it has to be at 100 degree centigrade. 
we have particular temperature restrictions over there. Those points on which the temperatures are fixed are considered as state points or saturated points. Saturated state points. That means on those points, the substance is saturated. What is that saturation? Let us try to understand now. Now, please keep your focus on this line P. Now, the P is 1 bar. The point 1 is minus 15 degrees centigrade. I am adding the heat. Upon adding the heat, it has reached point 2. On the point 2, it has been a saturated ice. That means what? If I still increase a little bit of temperature, the condition, I mean the phase of the substance changes. Look onto this. At point 2, it is still in the form of ice. Now, if I increase the temperature by little bit, if I come to this point, from 2 to this point, the phase changes. In the sense, at this point, the ice will not remain as a ice. It starts to melt. In the sense, it starts to becoming water. If I go on adding the heat, it starts getting converted into water. Up to what extent it will be converted into water? Till the point 3. At point 3, look onto the substance. At point 3, it has become completely water. At point 2, it was completely ice. At point 3, it is water. But the temperature hasn't been changed. Ice at 0 degree centigrade at point 2. Water at 0 degree centigrade at point 3. That means while moving from 2 to 3, the phase change has happened. That means at the end starting and end point, the substance is getting changed its phase. The phase of the substance is getting changed. Because of that, we are calling these two as saturated point. Now, at point 3, it is completely liquid, water. I will keep on adding the heat. Now it is completely water. I will go on adding the heat. If I go on adding the heat to the water, it is capturing the heat now. Now I am moving from 3 to 4. If I reach the point 4, still it exists as a water. That means water which is existing as liquid in, I mean at the point 4 at 100 degrees Celsius. That means from point 3 till I reach the point 4, the water is in the form of liquid only. I mean, it is in the phase of liquid only, but it is gaining the heat, thereby its temperature is rising. What was the temperature at 3? It is 0 degree centigrade. What is the temperature at 4? It is 100 degree centigrade. Between these two points, 3 and 4, it is still a water only. Its phase has not been changed, but it has raised its temperature from 0 to 100 degree centigrade. Now, if I go on adding the heat, from 4, if I started to add the heat, the water changes its phase. That means what? From 4, if I start to go on adding the heat, if I move a little bit further, the water, which is at 100 degrees centigrade, changes its phase and it tries to get converted into vapor. That means, this 4 is a saturated point at which water is going to change its phase. That is why the 4th point is a saturated point. Now, from 4, I will still be adding the heat till it reaches 0.5. That means what? Now, I know at 4, it is completely a water which is at 100 degree centigrade. I will keep on adding the heat. That means, once I move a little bit away from the point 4, the portion of the water, small portion of the water has get converted into vapor. If I go on adding the heat, the water content is getting converted into vapor. Till what extent? Until it reaches 0.5. That means what? At 0.5, the substance is completely a vapor. No water particle will exist at 0.5. So, because of that, this 0.5 is considered as a saturated point. What is the 0.5? water vapor. That means water has changed its phase to its vapor condition. That means it is a water vapor at 100 degree centigrade. 
Now look onto this, at 100 degree centigrade it was water, at 100 degree centigrade only it is water vapor. That means at the same temperature it has changed its phase because of that I have considered 0.5 also as a saturated state point. Now if I still keep on adding the heat, it may reach certain state 0.6 wherein the state of the water, I mean state of the substance will not change. It will be still in a vapor condition but it has absorbed the heat and it has become a superheated vapor. The temperature is any temperature greater than 100 degree centigrade at 1 bar pressure. So this is what is happening at 1 bar pressure from less than 0 degree centigrade to greater than 0 degree centigrade. This is an example for one bar line. If I take similar pressure lines, say I have taken P dash pressure, I have taken P double dash pressure. If I go on uh, increasing the pressure, I mean if I move up on the y axis, I will be increasing, increasing the pressure. So this is one bar pressure. This is I can say it is a greater than one bar, five bar pressure and this is I can say 20 bar pressure and still I can go on writing the pressure lines. I have looked on to the conditions at 1 bar. If I looked on to the conditions 5 bar, I will get these points 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash, 5 dash, 6 dash where those are also telling the same thing. 1 dash is less than 0 degree centigrade, 2 dash it is at 0 degree centigrade. I mean at that particular pressure, what is the state point? It may be 0 or may not be 0. At 3 dash, it is a state point. At 4 dash, it is also a state point. 5 dash, state point and 6 dash, which is greater than saturation temperature. In the same fashion, at P double dash also, 1 double dash, 2 double dash, 3 double dash, 4 double dash, 5 double dash and 6 double dash. I hope what I have done with respect to the pressure line is very clear. Now, if I add these saturated pressures at this condition 4, 4 double dash, 4 double dash, 4 dash, 4 double dash, 4 triple dash, 4, 4 dash. If I join those lines, that line becomes this. In the same way, if I join 5, 5 dash, 5 double dash, 5 triple dash, 5, 4 dashes, etc., etc., I will get this line. So, this line by joining the saturated points of 4, 4 dash, 4 double dash is considered as a saturated liquid line. And by joining this 5, 5 dash, 5 double dash, 5 triple dash, I will get a line which is called as a saturated vapor line. If I join 3, 3 dash, 3 double dash, 3 triple dash, etc., etc., I will get one more saturated liquid line. If I join 2, 2 dash, 2 double dash, 2 triple dash, etc., etc., I will get saturated solid line. That means we have particular lines with respect to the variation in pressure. What are those lines? Very first line is by joining 2, 2 dash, 2 double dash, which is nothing but saturated solid line. Second one is saturated liquid line 1. I have written it as saturated liquid line 1. And third one is saturated liquid line 2. And the fourth one is saturated vapor line. So these are the various lines, saturated lines that I am going to get with respect to the various phases of water. Now we need to understand what are these lines and what are the significance of these lines. Saturated solid line, saturated liquid line 1, saturated liquid line 2, saturated vapor line. What are the significances of those lines? Let us look on to these things now. Let us look on to those lines now. Very first thing is a saturated solid line. Here one thing is for sure, wherever I have written the lines on those lines or at those points, the phase change is going to happen. Because of that, we have called those points as a saturated points and we have called corresponding lines as a saturated lines. Now, let us concentrate on this line, saturated solid line. 
At point 1, what was the temperature? 15, minus 15 degree centigrade. At point 2, what was the temperature? 0 degree centigrade. At point 3, what is the temperature? 0 degree centigrade. What is happening between 2 to 3? At point 2, the ice is at 0 degree centigrade. At point 3, it has become water and the temperature is 0 degree centigrade. That means a phase change has happened over here. At point 2, it was a solid. At point 3, it is a liquid. So, here look onto this line. On these points, 2, 2 dash, 2 double dash, the condition of the water is completely a solid. A solid which is at its saturated state. At point 2, what is the temperature? At point 2, the temperature temperature is 0 degree centigrade. That means, that is the maximum temperature at one bar, the water can exist as a ice. If I still, I mean, if I little bit increase the temperature, the ice, I mean, the solid condition of the water will be collapsed. That means, the ice will be getting converted into water. Because of that, this particular point is a saturated point and the corresponding line is a saturated solid line. Saturated solid line. On that line, the substance will be a saturated solid. The solid in its saturation state. That is what is the saturated solid line. Second one, saturated liquid line. At point 3, at 1 bar pressure, what is the temperature? 0 degree centigrade. If, I, if you look on to point 2, the substance is ice at 0 degree centigrade. That means, at point 3, at the same temperature 0 degree centigrade and at the same pressure 1 bar, the substance is liquid. It is nothing but water. At point 3, it is water. At point 2, it is ice. Between 2 to 3, ice is getting converted into water. That means, in this region, I have solid plus liquid. Solid is ice, liquid is water. The ice at 0 degree centigrade is getting converted into liquid. It is getting converted into water. Till what extent it will, it will be converted into water? Till it reaches the point 3. On the line, on the point 3, the substance is completely a water and it is at its saturated state. If you go little bit away from point 3 towards left, then it will be a mixture of solid and liquid. That means, if you completely want a liquid at its saturated state at the lowest temperature, then it is point 3, which is nothing but 0 degree centigrade on 1 bar. If I little bit decrease the temperature, I mean if I little bit go towards its left, at this point it is solid plus liquid. I cannot call any line in between these two lines as a saturated line. On this line, 3, 3 dash, 3 double dash, it is completely a saturated liquid line. On this point, the substance become a saturation and its condition will be liquid. Because of that, this line is called as a saturated liquid line. So, this line is saturated liquid line. If you move away from this, I mean towards, to, towards its left, it will be not a liquid. It is a mixture of ice and liquid. Now, go on adding the heat till you reach the point 4. What is point 4? It is water at 100 degree centigrade. That means, at point 3, water is at 0 degree centigrade and it is existing as a liquid. At point 4, still it is a liquid only. It is in the form of liquid. That means what? From 3 to 4, it is existing as a liquid. If I still move towards right, I mean, if I little bit move towards right, its phase gonna change. The water will not exist as a water, it will be a mixture of water and vapor. That means what? The point 4 is a saturated point, up to that extent, the water will be in a liquid, liquid state. From point 3 up to point 4, the water will be in liquid state. That means, the point 4 is putting a restriction over there, still this point, it can exist as a liquid. If you go beyond 4, it will change its phase. 
because of phase change which is happening at point 4, I mean beyond point 4, the point 4 is considered as a saturated point and this line corresponding to 4, 4 dash, 4 double dash at various pressures will be considered as saturated liquid line 2. Next thing, saturated vapor line, still go on adding the heat till you reach as point 5. Now I am very clear at point 4 the substance is existing as a water at 100 degree centigrade. I am adding the heat till it reaches the point 5. Up to what extent you are adding the heat that is the question now. I am adding the heat. So at point 4 the water is at 100 degree centigrade. If I little bit add the heat then it gets converted into vapor. That means in this region in this point it is not only a water, it is water plus vapor. If I go on adding the heat, I will get a mixture of water and vapor, water and vapor, water and vapor till the point 5. On the point 5, the condition of the substance is completely a vapor. That means what? On this point 5, the water will not be in a water and vapor state. It will be completely a vapor. What is this point? 0.5 at 100 degree centigrade it will exist as a water vapor that means what here the water is getting converted into vapor at what point it gonna stop at 0.5 it gonna stop at 0.5 it will completely get converted into vapor this 0.5 is called as a saturated point because if I little bit move towards left its phase is going to change it is going to become a liquid plus vapor if I go beyond this it will be a complete vapor that means at point 5 it will be a complete vapor so because of that the point 5 is considered as a saturated point and the line corresponding to phi phi dash phi double dash will be considered as a saturated liquid line so now phi, phi dash, phi double dash is a saturated liquid line and I have named it as saturated liquid line 2 because I have already named one of the line as saturated, sorry, this particular line is named as saturated vapor line because on that line it is going to be a vapor. Phi, phi dash, phi double dash on this point the mixture of water and vapor will be a complete vapor because of that this line will be a saturated vapor line. Now let us look on to all the four lines saturated solid line on which the substance will be completely a solid saturated liquid line one on which the substance is completely a liquid at its lowest temperature on this line saturated liquid line two on this line the substance is completely a liquid at its maximum temperature saturated vapor line at this line the substance is completely a vapor that is why it is called, called as a saturated vapor line. So these are the few saturated lines with respect to PV diagram.